Justin Johnner here to explain how filters work. We thought this would be a good environment to show you. Um, you know, there's a reason we always tell you guys to check your quad and get rid of the noisy motors or whatever uh, before even messing with the filters because this will give you a good example of how a filter works. We're in a pretty noisy environment. We're here talking to you, you hear the background noise from the cars. This is what kind of your quad feels like uh, when you have noisy motors on it or if you're touching the gyro or have bedded electrical or whatever. What examples would you say? Noodle arm? Noodle arms, yeah. <laughs> So, so we're going to do a little boost here, and uh, and you'll see we'll clean up the audio filters as best as possible during the vi this video. But you're going to see we're never going to get a very clear picture of the gyro. Now we're going to take this camera. We're going to go someplace where it's quieter. Should be a good example of why, what would, how your quad would be if you didn't need to do changes. If you had nice, good motors, and you'll see that you, you hear a much clearer audio, and you get much more of the good information we're going to need. I would call it quiet. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but it's quieter. All right, as you can see, we are in a quieter environment, and the noise is much better. Wait, I don't know. what am I supposed to say? There's less background noise. Oh yeah, there's a lot less background noise, which is what the gyro would be doing. So that's why it's good for it to have a clean build before you even start introducing, you know, filters and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. You talk. Yeah, so you like that fish. So essentially, this is what it would be like if you had a cleaner build, less noise, not bendy arms, stuff like that. Uh, so we have to do less filtering in this example, which should hopefully make our audio sound better. I, we haven't checked it, but I'm going to assume it's going to sound better. And we don't have to do any filters and enhancements, or maybe as near as many filters and enhancements. I mean, probably in the editing software, we'll do a few things to bring out the audio a little better. But the less filtering you have to do, the better it's going to sound. And gyros, uh, they, they measure movement, they measure waves. It's pretty much the same filters we use for audio we use for gyros. So that's why something like this is important. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So no matter how much you filter the noise on your quad or the something like the previous video, it will never be as good as this if you had a clean build. Uh, and that is why it's important to obviously have a brand new setup. But some of us can't, so... And essentially, you know, but, but some of us can do better stuff like, uh, you know, if your arms need to be replaced or, I don't know, maybe there's just one motor that needs to be replaced or adding capacitors, they filter noise as well. Anything we can do through hardware is always going to be better than anything we can do through software uh, because hardware changes are no, there's no sacrifice. You're not losing anything by doing it. And even here, it's, it's kind of noisy. We came here to be quieter, but we forgot um, there's nature out there. There's a lot of nature. Yeah. yeah. Lots so, of bugs. So it's definitely so it's definitely noisier than we even expected. I mean if we were in a completely silent room our audio would probably sound pristine. And we're using a little crappy mic on this camera anyways. So. But it does make a point. Wait what was I was gonna say something. Uh, well, well I figured that those of you might not know exactly how a gyro works or what it's doing and I actually didn't know when I started until I started talking to him and getting I guess more involved beyond flying. And uh, so I think we should probably explain that. And he already mentioned it before that it's kind of, uh, you know, the filters kind of work like an audio filter. And uh, you can explain that better. Okay, so here's your quadcopter. So the way a quadcopter flies is pretty, pretty simple. Um, there's something in here. Um, there's something in here that measures how fast it moves in different directions. So there's three measurements a quad uses. There's one that's this way. It measures how fast it's moving in that direction. It's called pitch. Sure. <laughs> There's one. Well, not not this. Well, okay. I mean, the gyro. The way be, that you're moving it. Yeah. But the gyro can be in any yeah, orientation. Yeah, 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 that's true. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So okay. That axis. That axis. Yeah, There's yeah. one. It's it's doing this way, which you know, John. I'm sure will be glad to point out. That's the roll, roll axis. <laughs> And there's, there's one that goes this way. And so, those of you might know that is yaw and or rudder. So, so <laughs> even if the gyro isn't oriented that way, that's what we're trying to figure out. You can actually do it at 45 degrees and then do some crazy math and figure out those movements. But so there's a sensor in here. And sensors, uh, there's, one good, there's one thing about all sensors is they suck. Um, there's no good sensors. And all a sensor is is just some way of acquiring data. But there's no perfect sensors, so what we're trying to do is get the best data we possibly can out of uh, the sensor, our gyro in this case. 
Um, so one thing that we use is a filter. And what a filter is, a filter just means it's something that changes the data in some way. Did you know that? Yeah. So it doesn't mean it makes it better. A filter doesn't always make it better. It usually doesn't make it better, though. Because well, you lose does. stuff. No, no, no. But I'm saying, like, a filter could just be, if we had five numbers and we just could add one to each one, that would be a filter. It would be a stupid filter. It doesn't do anything. But it's still a filter because it's changing the data. Yeah, it's an input, and then it comes out differently, basically. Yeah. yeah. So so we have two types of filters in Flight 1. We have, uh, most of our filters are audio-based. They're there. Thanks. Yeah. Most of our filters are audio-based. They're low-pass, which means... Um, they just let the data through on the lower end. Uh, prop wash is at a higher frequency, so that's why it's better to filter as little as possible. Because the more data we can pass through, the more good data we can pass through, the better uh, we're going to be able to make the quad fly. Because the more stuff we'll get out of it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, and then what, but don't it also. If that's true, then the more you increase filtering, the more likelihood you're going to get prop wash because it doesn't know, exactly it doesn't know what is prop wash and what isn't basically. Yeah, so it can't tell the difference. Yeah. It's a good 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 way of putting it. And also, it reacts to it a lot slower too, doesn't it? Like, uh, like you basically experience the prop wash and then it reacts to it. Well, and that that's where latency comes okay, in. So that's yeah. not over filtering. That's just the byproduct of the filter. Oh yeah, that's right. So so when you filter, um, filters sound good on paper, but the problem with filters is, is what he was touching on is that uh, the more you filter, or some filters are better than others, but essentially when you're filtering, you're delaying the data. And in fact, uh, a filter can just be delaying the data. That is a filter. That all it does is delay a data. And the way a filter works is it's really pretty simple. Um, the most simplistic low-pass filter would be if you had three numbers. So let's say you have a number 10, 15, 20. Then you create an average. Right. right. So a low-pass filter would be like you average all those together, and then you get an average, and that's the number you're going to use. So your last reading was 20, but you average those together, which that's what's 25, 45 divided by 3. So your number would be 15. So you're going to actually use the reading of 15 instead of 20, but 20 could have been the actual reading. Yeah. So you're actually changing the data, not getting proper. So the noisier your quad is, the more you filter it, the more latent the input's going to be. Not even necessarily latent, but the more error prone it's going to be. Yeah. Uh. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, so in this example, uh, you know, the way a low pass really works is it weighs the current sample a certain percentage, and it weighs the past samples, and depending on how far back you go, it's like a rolling average type thing. But that's how low pass works. It's, it's just averaging. It's really simple. Low pass filters are very simple. Uh, they get way more complex. Uh, but essentially, that's what the most of the filters we use are. That's what the filters, all the, the like beta flight, butterfly. All those use. Every filter they have right now is a low pass filter. There is only one exception to this rule in current flight controller stuff, and that's our predictive filter. Uh, the way the predictive filter works is it, it predicts what it thinks the quad's going to do based on data we have, and it gets what the gyro says it's doing, and it weighs both, and it decides what it thinks the reading should be. So it's actually not an audio filter, it's not a low pass filter. It's actually trying to figure out what the gyro really should be, rather than just filtering it based on frequency. Um, the issue with this, the, the, the predictive filter you love in general, right? Yeah. Because it, because it, it, what does it do? Uh, it flies the best uh, out of all of them, but like, like, how would you describe it compared to the other filters? I don't know. It's just smooth, a lot smoother, and more responsive. Yeah. But it's, the, uh, but well, the issue I've seen is that you have to have a really clean setup for it to be awesome. In, yeah. my, in my opinion. Because so uh, if you have like a bent motor shaft, you probably wouldn't have a good, it may not work. Yeah, well. it may not work as well. But I, I think what you kind of hit the keyword is so the predictive filter is more, it assumes you're going to keep kind of going where you're going. Yeah. So if you're going a level flight, it's going to think you're going to stay level flight. Uh, so it's actually a little more latent for that reason because it ha you have to change its mind because it's predicting it's going to keep, thinks it's going in one direction and then all of a sudden the direction changed. It needs to make sure we're going in that direction before it, it agrees. So that ends up making it smoother. So for for freestyle, that's a, that's a that's a, an advantage because you yeah. know your your stuff's smoother. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of latency, although it's, it feels really responsive. And it'll track on a tracks on a rail. Yeah. So it won't have those those abrupt changes, which uh, you know they, they sometimes come out as oscillations, whatever stuff like that. Uh, so for for racing, the low pass filters I think is where it's at because even though the data isn't as good, maybe maybe it lets through a little bit more of the vibrations and stuff. It's going to be the most responsive, the most quick to to react to, to, to uh, changes immediately.
so uh, we're going to go over the low pass filter. So we said there's two types of filters. There is um, low pass and predictive. But low pass and predictive. So predictive we went over. Uh, we basically, it's not a filter, but it is a filter because anything changes data, it's a filter. Okay, so there's two types of filters, low pass and predictive. Uh, we talked about predictive, so we're done with that one for now. Yeah. Right? So uh, predictive only works by... And then you by... have a million low pass filters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, predictive only works with multi-shot and it only works at 32 kilohertz, and it only pretty much works by itself. Uh, it's based on a model, really scientific, lots of number crunching shit. So don't mix any other filters with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so weird. use it by itself. What's cool about it is there's no tuning. It either works or it doesn't. There's no numbers. You just literally yeah. select it and go. And then that's it. So, so you disable everything, you pick predictive, and you go fly. If your quad doesn't fly well, you can figure out what's wrong with it. You, you could make it fly well. Um, but it's not something you're going to do in tuning. So you're going to have to disable all the filters, enable predictive. If it's not working, then try to figure out why your quad's broken. Like bad motors, noodle arms, touching the gyro, not a clean stack, not we using the gummies. might have walkers. So on and so forth. We have walkers coming. And I don't mean the walking dead walker. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, get back! Get into your house and go! All right. Okay, back to filter talk. The walkers are left. We're good for now. 